Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Pete over at Fusion Corp coming at you with a video on Uncle Drew possibly making a move to the Big Apple. You heard it here, all right? Still a little hard to believe, not a, not a certainty, just some rumors, but I wanted to talk about it, see what you guys think, and tell you guys my opinion on how this might work and why we should definitely do it. But before I get into it, please hit that subscribe button. Go check out Bernie's Game 4 reaction video with the NBA Finals. Hear what he has to say about not only the game itself, but LeBron, the, the story that he broke his hand after Game 1, punching a blackboard. Talks about it there. Also, if you're interested in more Knicks content, please check out our Knicks Fixer Upper video. It came out about a month ago. Good discussions there. It's about 26 minutes, I think. If you want to hear a long-winded discussion on the Knicks, that's your video. But let's jump into the news. The story that came out yesterday, today is Wednesday, June 9th. The story that was reported by Bleacher Report, amongst other sources, was that some members of the Boston Celtics front office are scared slash concerned that Kyrie Irving may make a move to the Big Apple after the upcoming 2018-2019 NBA season. This is a possibility because Kyrie has an opt-out clause in his contract after this next season. And the rumor is, according to certain people like Chris Mannix over at Yahoo Sports, he has a story that says when Kyrie was still with the Cleveland Cavaliers, there was reports that he was talking with members of the organization in the locker room that he might want to play for the New York Knicks someday. This is not new news, but the news now is that the Celtics are scared of that rumor and scared that Kyrie may just want to make that move still in the upcoming free agency class after this next one when the Knicks have the actual cap room to sign him. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about this, how this might happen, and what we're gonna have to do as an organization to get this to take place. So as far as the Knicks contracts, their roster after this 2018-2019 season, I'm gonna list off some of the players that are still, or I'm gonna list off all the players that are gonna still be under contract after this upcoming season. You're gonna have Joe Kim Noah will still have one year left of his terrible nightmarish deal. It'll be about $19 million, if I'm correct, maybe $19.5 million. Then you also have Frank Nitlakina will still be on his rookie deal. Hopefully, hopefully Chris Stapps will have his mega extension. That's what we we need that first and foremost to lock up Kyrie too. Um, then you have Tim Hardaway Jr. is on his big deal. We'll get a little bit more into that in just a second, how that works out with this Kyrie deal. You've got Courtney Lee and Lance Thomas will both be on the last years of their deals. You have Emmanuel Moutier, last year of his rookie deal, and Damian Dotson will also still have one more year of his rookie deal as well. And then you obviously have whoever we draft in this upcoming draft with the eighth slot. I'm going to talk about that again in just a second. And then possibly whoever we end up picking in next year's draft. If we tank it up, get the number one pick it might be rj barrett that would be what i'm that's what i'm hoping for but let's talk about some players on this team that we could easily get rid of who we should get rid of to make this Kyrie deal happen first and foremost it's joe kim noah he's gonna have one more year left like i said 19 million dollars but he'll be an expiring so you can definitely move him much more easily than you can now he's definitely he's got two years left he's one of the worst deals in the league easily so he's really there's no chance we can move this guy without getting rid of a first round pick or something really big maybe Frank Nitlakina might be somebody who could go with Joachim Noah but I know as a fan of the Knicks I don't want that to happen I'd rather us just ride out this Noah deal let this guy with his blonde beard hang out in the jungle whatever right but we could also just buy him out after this upcoming season. If he doesn't play again, if he's still just a worthless asset on this team, just buy him out. It's only one year, and then you still you have all this room to not only bring in Kyrie, but then you could definitely bring in another lesser-named free agent. There's going to be a ton of guys available in that 2019 offseason. Let's talk about what this means for the 2018-2019 season, though, because it has some ramifications if this is actually a true story. There's certain things that need to be accomplished in this upcoming season. I'm not talking win totals per se, because that's not what this team is looking for. They're looking for development. And I know a lot of you Knicks fans out there know this. Don't expect a playoff run. Don't expect anything along those lines. 
the biggest thing that the Knicks need to happen for Kyrie to come to the Big Apple, come to New York and play for us, is we need to see a healthy Chris Stapps at some point in this upcoming season. And I, you know, I was actually kind of bummed that you had James Dolan, who's one of the worst human beings alive, come out and say, we might not see KP this year at all. I think that's a big mistake. And I actually think if you have Kyrie as a possibility, if he's in play, they're definitely going to try and get KP out there. Because one of the bigger reasons that Kyrie would ever want to play for New York is if he has a guy to play with him, a superstar to play with him, and that's Chris Stapps. And those guys would go perfectly together. The, the floor spacing, what those two guys could accomplish in the pick and roll, it's just that would be so incredible for the city of New York. You'd easily have a playoff contending team, maybe even an Eastern Conference Finals contending team if you put those two guys on the court together. Full health. Secondly, we need to see that Fizdale is the coach of the future this season. If he's able to develop Nitlakina into not a, not just a good prospect, but an actual valuable NBA player, that is what we need to see. We need to see some development from Damian Dotson. We need to see Tim Hardaway Jr. continue to get better. Or alternatively for Tim Hardaway Jr., I said we were going to talk about him a little bit more. We could, we could see this guy get moved, possibly. And we've seen him get moved before. We've seen him go to pl play for Atlanta. He has a really not good contract, so he needs to up his value a little bit this upcoming season. Without KP, it's definitely a possibility. This is a guy that could get moved to even open up some more cap space. Last thing I want to talk about is bringing, as far as bringing Kyrie in, is what we do in this upcoming draft. I think that this, I was already not a fan of taking another guard in this draft, seeing as we have Trey Burke, we have Nitlakina, we have Moutier, Dotson, we have Tim Hardaway Jr. We have all these guards, so why are we going to bring in Trey Young? Why are we going to bring in Colin Sexton, who I like a lot? Or even Shea Gilgis Alexander, who seems to be another really good talent. Those guys don't really fit in the, the developmental process that we have in place because we already have so many other projects to work on. So we need to take a wing. I know a lot of my Knicks fans out there, a lot of you guys on the Knicks Reddit, if you're watching this, you guys want Miles Bridges. Mikhail Bridges, we want one of the Bridges boys. But let me open up a couple other possibilities. Kevin Knox is a guy that I'm personally very high on. Got incredible talent. He could have a year to develop under Fizdale before we get this Kyrie Kristaps playoff run possible, possibly going on. And he just has so much potential. I'm really high on Miles Bridges too. I don't want to get too in depth on him because I know a lot of people have done research for him in the Knicks community and just. In general, he's a big named prospect who's gonna be in our range. Mikhail Bridges is the same kind of thing. I think he's the safest pick of anybody that could be available in our range. But there's one guy in particular that I think should be our focus if we can get him. And it sounds like, according to some news, that he's gonna be a possible fit in New York if we can get him. Michael Porter Jr. has had some really bad interviews with teams that were really high on him, specifically Chicago was the team that a lot of people suspected he was going to go to. This guy could have been the number one pick if he was not injured in his college basketball season. This guy has so much potential. He could be in our range, and he could be the, the perfect either third, second, and who knows? He could be better than Kyrie is now, or even better than Chris Stapps. You just never know with a guy of the frame, talent level that Michael Porter Jr. has. But any of those four guys that I just named, the Bridges, Kevin Knox, or Michael Porter Jr., if he's in our range, would be the perfect third person to fit with Chris Stapps and Kyrie. And my point, getting back to the Kyrie portion of this video, is that we need a wing, another third guy in that three, he can guard multiple positions, switching three and D spot to fit alongside Chris Stapps and Kyrie. We also need Fizdale to convince Chris Stapps to be the big man on the court, be the rim protector, essentially be our five. But really when it comes down to it, basketball is positionless. If Chris Stapps wants to be a four, he wants to be a four. But it doesn't mean that he can't stay towards the basket and then on offense be more of a perimeter player. It's all up to Fizdale and what he's able to convince these guys to do and whether he can put them in a mindset looking towards the future. And Kyrie really is a strong possibility, guys. I don't want to get my hopes up as a Knicks fan. It's never a good choice to get your hopes up. Don't do it. Just stay away from the, the hopes and dreams section of life, basketball life. 
It's not good. You'll hurt your heart. I've hurt mine very many times. It's a poor sentence, but it's, I just got emotional, all right? Knicks fans, rejoice. There's a chance that a superstar player wants to play in New York after the Carmelo Anthony era. And Kyrie could be our guy. He gets a year, gets two years to get coached under one of the best coaches in the league, Brad Stevens. He gets ample amount of time to heal that knee, get healthy, and then he might just move to New York and be our guy. Tell me what you guys think about this Kyrie possibility. You guys want to throw everything we got at him if he wants to come to New York? Do you want to build for the future and the possibility of having him? Or do you just want to play it safe and take a guard who possibly could be good? And then if Kyrie's available and our guard doesn't turn out well, then we just skip on Kyrie altogether. Tell me what you guys think. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Share this with your Knicks friends. Share this with your whoever, right? You got basketball fans in your life. Please let them know. This has been your boy Pete over at Fusion Corp. Peace.